Chalk talk, chalk talk, chalk talk, chalk talk, chalk talk, chalk talk, chalk talk. Yo, welcome to Chalk Talk. We've got Ever Vigilant here with us, uh, Tennessee band uh, from East Tennessee. They've known each other for a long time. Uh, they play a lot of shows around Chattanooga, Knoxville, Nashville, all over Tennessee. And, uh, you know, welcome you guys. Thank uh, you. Work, work. So, so let's jump in. We love ha- Chalk Talk. Hell yeah. How, uh, how long have you guys been a band for? Since 1997. Since this time in 1997. Yeah, about what, this summer? time. The end of June. Oh, shit. Yep, last week in June, right? So 21 years? So this is about that week. Yeah. 21 years. June 24th would be the first. We might as well just have years. a cheers right now. Yeah, cheers. cheers. 21 years. To 21s. Right. Yeah, we can finally drink. <laughs> Word. <laughs> Yeah, so the band is Ooh. old enough to indulge now. Yeah, the band is <laughs> the band. Is. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's old. We have that's, we maybe we got empty nest syndrome coming up. Oh shit! When uh, what happens when that happens? It's when your kids move We're out. We're lonely. Oh, we but yeah, I we thought buy it cars. Meant, I was thinking, yeah, I was thinking midlife crisis. <laughs> oh, yeah. But yeah, we did do. Yeah. I, I do remember now the uh, the twentieth uh, twentieth anniversary party last year. Big bash at the barn. The big barn bash at, uh, during the summer, though. Yeah, Tim Gould's barn, Spring City, Tennessee. It's a great venue. Stuck out in the woods. Little known. I would say little known, but now no, a lot of people. A couple I hundred meet. people at a party. Mm-hmm. A lot of people. Best party I've ever been to. Show. I have heard of it already. A lot of people have when I'm around here in Nashville, even. Yeah. So They're where did you known. guys? Uh, when you guys moved up here uh, to Nashville. Um, like, where were you guys playing shows at? Were you guys playing short shows more in uh, Nashville or Chattanooga or what? Mm. Like, before y'all moved up here? Because I'm sure once you moved up here, it started, you guys started to do a lot more around here. But. It seemed like the early 2000s, we were playing a lot in Nashville. But uh, for most of our career, we've always went to Chattanooga as our home big city. Yeah, for so, East Tennessee. Yeah, it's only an hour away from our hometown and... So we played there a lot, and then <clears throat> once we moved to Murfreesboro, uh, there was always fifteen gigs years in ago Murfreesboro. A lot of house yeah. parties there too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Knoxville so, had a little bit too. We played Knoxville a little, but a lot of it was house parties. A lot of everything was house parties in the early years. Really? Some of the best shows, house parties, and in East Tennessee. It's just something about squeezing a bunch of people in a place where a bunch of people ain't supposed to be. Yeah. <laughs> it floor, just makes did, a party. Did the floors ever break or anything? Well, at the barn, the there's barn. been a couple of legs go through the floor. <laughs> yeah. But uh, not at the house parties. Resilient no. old houses. Yeah. And just, there's been stages built in them. Oh, yeah. In what? In some of the houses. There were oh, so shit. many house parties frequented in Knoxville. They built just built a stage in the living room. Yeah. That was permanent, and it was cool. It was amazing. It was like a venue, for sure. So who was the first one to like move up here? Nasty. Yes, I moved to Murfreesboro in 2002. 2002? Yes. Sweet. And then the band moved up here. They followed? Yeah. In Came 03. After. <clears throat> in 03. What, you yeah. moved to the borough? Is that where you guys moved to, too? Mm-hmm. You guys yeah. moved to Murphy's Yeah, Grove? I lived there for a couple of years. Oh my I loved goodness. it. Yeah. Very blurry couple of years. <laughs> 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 but we did so much in those couple of years. Did you guys wild. end up sharing a house or what? Yes. Yep. With about 12 other people. At so one time people there was no. At one time there was thirteen people in this house, and none oh, of us had shit. a job. <laughs> yeah, zero bills getting Except paid. Except for Tony Pizza, he had yeah, he, a very he, good job. He, he did a adult entertainment, but oh shit! But, uh, <laughs> so was he a star or a filmer? Uh, he was like a toe guy, like they, <laughs> like they filmed his toes on websites. And, oh shit! So yeah, no, that <laughs> but, if you could have. But well, we were mooching off of her manager <laughs> to get by. Most if somebody could have filmed that landlord kicking everybody out <laughs> at the end. Surprise attacking Whoa. us. That was like a Hollywood movie. 
Well, what do you what do you mean you were mooching off of your manager? What do you mean you, you he like, was pay, he was making ends meet. He was paying some things. So what? There was a you guys had a manager. You guys had someone booking oh you. Oh my gosh! Yeah. I mean, Basically, I ran into this. It was a false flag. Yeah, it was it was <laughs> it was weird. But I ran into this older guy while I was in college, just uh, at a party and. Uh, like gave him my demo because he was into rock and roll and he hit me back I was like hey I got a lot of money I was like oh shit <laughs> like, cool. he's like we're gonna sign you and you're gonna uh go play with Creed and we were like <laughs> yes <laughs> so did you so you guys signed some paperwork uh luckily no I don't yeah we never signed I anything but he just like kept a in my carry. drawer for yeah however long that little period of our lives was how long was it was it a whole year it two was years. more than yeah, that more right? than a year yeah. 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 two years and if year. we'd have signed it we'd have been oh it was totally it leaning way toward him it was a bad uh contract to begin with but we never signed uh, that. You know, Our things got really convoluted with him it. personally anyway. So, I mean, it was a good thing that mm. we didn't sign and we got out. And But he was still but, giving you guys money? Well, yeah, during the process. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. A lot of money. He was feeding us and drinking us. Housing and, me. Yeah. It was well, awesome. What we was were, he getting out of it? I have uh, no idea. He, he really did believe in the man. He owned a rock time. band. Yeah he, yeah, he just wanted his own rock band, I guess. Mm-hmm. And, but... How old was he? We started. Uh, He's about mid thirties, close to forty. How old are you guys? Right now or then? No. Then oh, I was early. nineteen. Yeah. I wasn't even. I was just turning twenty-one. I was twenty. Yeah. Because at the beginning of it, I wasn't. We were 21. playing in clubs. He got us playing in these clubs, and we Nashville couldn't even lot. get into. Yeah. Couldn't even drink. We were drinking backstage, you know, out of our own on, cooler. We would bring a cooler <laughs> onto stage when we weren't old enough. Those yeah, were some of the wildest times. You wouldn't believe some of the stories. That's what you do. But yeah, there'd be times he'd come in, just uh, take us out to eat, wine us and dine us, go buy us a bunch of clothes, oh, give us money. Yeah. We get we get in the mall when the you mall was already closed. Oh, oh, dude, I cannot do it. If I do that, <laughs> it's from you'll t- just it's from today's sponsor, Margaritaville, the yeah. finest tequila uh-huh. on the shelves. It Again, sure it is. They can stay on the shelf. It sure is. Like Didn't even need a lime. Yeah. No, I'm uh, just going to have a sip of my yingling. A nice, refreshing lime. <laughs> <laughs> just a dark amber. So, uh, so going piggybacking off uh, what we were going through with that, uh, some people were trying to control our music, and that was kind of the point where we realized that we were in charge of everything, and we always would be. Yeah. And we... Started trying to record our own music in a more professional way because because uh, yeah. other people, if you get them to do it, they take over <laughs> yeah. a lot of the choices, yeah. the artistic yeah. side of it. So we become producers at that time. It's not easy to say no to people that are flashing money at you and present Flat. telling you you're going to be bigger than this, and we're about to spend this much in the studio with you and all this. You get. To seeing those uh, stars, well, then, and you're just like, dude, yes, yes, yes. Plus, back yes, then, MTV yes. was almost still happening and stuff, so the music videos had, they were considered like big money things. Everything yeah. was such big money, and you wanted signed back then really bad compared to now, how it's yeah, not it a big deal. Yeah, it was before the death of, of being signed. Yeah. It was still something. So we were, we were like, yes, attain. sir, trying to, we were trying to do whatever we Especially could. Especially if you're like 20. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. You're like, it was like, I, I'd like, stop please, going yes. to college to go and do this. With these guys, and I was so happy to be able to get out of school and be like, dude, no, I'm going to be a musician. Yeah, going to be rock stars. Yeah. (laughs) So, uh, yeah, I was naive, but thank God. You know, that's the time when people give it up right there, is when they've gone to college, they've gone further in some other walk of life than they have in music, and then they just decide that music's not important, and I'm glad that at that time, crucial time I jumped in and just gave it all to music you know even though that that didn't work out at least I was still in the game yeah when did you guys uh first start doing like music videos like when was your first music oh. video a real video oh, man, even if it was so even now. something that oh I don't know oh, if what you mean college right yeah I don't know what you mean by real like alone no we're, 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 we're not the cameraman we did some where we were cameraman yeah. but yeah, we used to do been skits, like, yeah, on VHS yeah, but not stuff. like full out music videos for our no. songs. Yeah. But Alone Now would be the oldest one you can find. It's called Alumni? Alone, Alone now. now. Alone Now. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. 
uh, lazy. Where did you guys? What did you guys? Was room. that around YouTube or what? Yeah, was it on YouTube? I think that's now. when YouTube first started or something. I don't did know you guys it was put it on, on YouTube yeah. then? We did. Yeah, it's on there. We did. I don't think we put it on there. No, no, the dudes that made it put it yeah. on there. But Dean. it's got yeah, I got this mohawk up the yeah, here, dude. dude. That was the one. Yeah, I think I've seen it. Slicer mohawk. Flip. Are you are you jumping on some beds or something? Yeah. There's yeah. like there's like some there's like some women in oh, there. Oh yeah, yeah, some girls torturing me. Some little <laughs> beautiful ladies. But it's, it's really uh it's a something. cool video, man. Yeah, oh, yeah, you know, videos are tough though. It's another one of those where it's like if you knew what the concept was written out on paper and then you watch it, you get a whole nother view of it. Like it's hard to get a whole story into a three minute music video. Yeah. And that song's probably even shorter. But yeah, so it's just one of those. It looks crazy though. There's a lot of fun in that. Yeah. How many have you made so far? Oh, uh, just a handful. Three. Yeah. You three. No, you used to make some too. Well, we've got a few. Yeah, that me and Chad have made, or that I've yeah. made on my own. Just so I mean, if you type it up on There's YouTube, 10 you're gonna or get less. Yeah. Five or six. But you guys also have a lot of like. Uh, you're just like they're not necessarily music videos, but you guys are like sitting around jamming. Yeah. And stuff. Yeah, a lot of live, uh, yeah. candid stuff. If on you film. YouTube ever vigilant, you get a lot of stuff. Yeah, there's you guys have a lot of content. Yeah, and there's a lot of still picture stuff. You know, just the songs are online. You can yeah. listen to them, and then it's just a picture. What are you guys uploading your stuff onto now? Uh, mostly, like, ev- like when's the la- what's the last album you guys put out? We put out one for our 20 year anniversary called Fresh of Breath Air. Yeah, so that was and a year ago. Yeah, last July we got it done, uh, produced, mixed, and mastered by us. Yeah. Did all the artwork. Self-produced. Yeah. And then uh, we put what that... You, yeah, what do you put it on to, like online? Uh, it's on SoundCloud. Cool. It's also on Spotify and yeah. Uh, so you know, every iTunes and whatnot. Is that what you but guys... But it's always for free on SoundCloud. Is that what you guys are going to continue to do with your next projects and everything? Yes, I think yeah. what we're ready to do now, we, we have a single we want to put out and try to do a, a new video. And yeah. then basically when we get that, get a buzz for that, we'll put something else out with that on it. Yeah, and we'll probably put it on one of these. We're going to probably go to these instead of... Uh, Flip that open. It's a, uh, it's a USB. Yeah, a you can go ahead and put... Are you, just guys, are you guys going to put just one... Well, I mean, it's the beauty of these, or, right? So we can design them however we want to. So we're going to do the new single. It's going to come on this. New albums that we do are going to come on this. Old albums are going to be reprinted on this. You so know? You, and it's so something that you like, can just take home. You can put it in the computer. You can put songs on your computer. Take this baby and use it for whatever you want to. Yeah, you yeah. can. Yeah. sporting the logo and, you know, oh, showing off your favorite single or whatever it is. Yeah, because you guys always make uh, hard copies. Yeah, we always yeah. do, but I just feel like that it's kind of going to the it's wayside. It's getting hard to get people to want your CD, like to hold it the rest of the show yeah, in their pocket. Yeah, the greatest in your show. pocket. Yeah, in their yeah. hand. You need one of those yeah, for yeah. sure. I mean, yeah, it's kind of like it's kind of like Rich Wallet, anywhere. the front wallet. <laughs> this is this is kind of changing. <laughs> this is now your your pocket album. Well, I think for you the don't fact run around that it's with the money, big ones. you can use it again. People are yeah. gonna want to keep it. You yeah, want to sure. stick that in your pocket. That's mm-hmm. actually valuable. Yeah. Aside from the musical content, which they're gonna take take the, uh, your stuff off. I think and put they got on it. I think they got <laughs> yeah, me on it. Then you passing it along on the box to them. It said two hundred fifty-seven yeah. megabytes or something. Okay. Two fifty-nine range. I can't remember, but uh, what I, is bought, that, gigs? I bought two gigs, and uh, so oh, they sent the wrong one. Yeah, lines. I was like, huh. I hope, oh yeah. man. Well, so don't worry. There's the two next gigs one. To yeah, the, yeah. I think the next one will be two gigs. But I'm pretty sure that that when they 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 don't have anything written on them, but the box had that written on it, and it made me second guess my whole. We'll have to check them out. Well, yeah. other other than the new single, what else do you guys have coming up? Well, we're Shows. playing. Yeah, we're playing uh, July 25th at Cobra. Yeah, and that's Ever Vigilance playing. Yes. East, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's East Nashville, <clears throat> and it's gonna be a. Uh, with Souls United, yeah, we're gonna do a, a canned food drive. I think. Oh, good okay. idea. So S- something easy. So how like uh, so all you'd have to you have to bring some cans. How many cans do you have to bring to get in for free? Uh, 
Yeah, well, I haven't talked to Sheldon Diggs about that yet, but yeah. he would be the one to figure mm-hmm. that out and then see who else. If you don't bring in. cans, yeah. how much is it? Five? Probably five. Probably five. Who, who else are you guys playing with? Do you know yet? We have talked to uh, Taco and the Mofos from Jackson, Tennessee. Oh, yeah. And we've got a few others in mind. Uh, one of our friends, Wes Wyrick. Oh, from cool. Knoxville is coming up to open uh, a solo gig. Oh. Uh, so he's going to do like some acoustic? No, some something? DJ stuff. Oh, he's, he's, DJ. Him he's and producing him. Oh, DJ. He does yeah. psychedelic anything. I'm, sorry. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he just moves around yeah. psychedelically. Yeah. <laughs> that would be funny. Psychedelic anything. <laughs> yeah, so I know for sure he's coming, but I'm still waiting to... Uh, Fill out the rest of the bill. Well, hit us up. Anybody out there that wants to, interested in getting on this, we always say yes when it's Souls United because uh, it's always for a good cause. It yeah. makes sense to. And Sheldon works hard. We try to represent. So, are you guys working on a new album? Like, do you have more than just the single done, or? Right now, we're a single deep. We've got well, some cuts that didn't make it on the, we have two. the last. There's two, because one of them yeah. doesn't really have words, but we've got music. And then the yeah, other I mean, one we're is moving almost into done, it. but it's very a new baby in the utero state. How many projects have you released? Do you know? Let's count them. Let's just count. We did the tape in 97. Mm. We did uh, the parties here in 99. Uh, uh, the meat. No, the one, uh, uh Make shit. a Scene. Make a Scene, oh, yeah. 2001. And we did three song projects. EP. EP. The Meat was like 22 uh, B-sides. Uh, we did Clusive, which was a five-song EP, which was really good. That was self-produced. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we, uh, did the I guess, rise. The Rise, The Fall. And then fresh of breath there. there. So eight. It's eight. 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 It's funny eight the first albums. one's called The Tape. <laughs> yeah. It was called yeah. Ever That's Vigilant perfect. to Ever Vigilant. That it was yeah, self. The just the tape. Yeah. It was on a cassette it tape. Was it was recorded in their me. Nana's garage. Yeah. Imagine I've talked this. to I've talked to older uh, producers and they just talk about everything was recorded on tape. Like yeah. you would have one keyboard that's going into one tape, then mm-hmm. a second keyboard on another tape and then vocals on another tape mm-hmm. and they would just have to and then finally record all those into one tape I guess Man. you mix and master those I mean, into yeah. that's recording bro we had we yeah. had a uh, that's like the theory old boom box it, right? on the beginning and then we had that four track tape recorder but wasn't the tape on a boom box oh, it was yeah. from the so boom box imagine that we great. were in a basement when we were kids <clears throat> and uh, we're playing down in the back of this basement room and then the stairs is going up, and then at the top of the stairs we'd have this stereo turned around, facing away, like we tried everything. So it's like in another room at the top of the stairs, and it just made for a pretty daggum good mix. And that's how we recorded the first album. We just did it live takes down in the basement on the boombox, and then we took it and mass produced it. Yeah. Well, mass. <laughs> you know, a hundred tapes or something oh, in 1997. Take, yeah, that'd take a long you have time. To record them. At the, yeah, it was real time. The real record. speed. Maybe it was, it, no it was two times. I don't yeah, know. Imagine showing up in eighth grade with a book bag full of tapes. Yeah, that was it. And then right, and this then, is my new album. And then when we were buying were, tapes. Yeah, you cut your own folder paper. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, you had to make it. And then when we were in high school. Uh, see, back when CD burners weren't in every computer, computers weren't they didn't in every have, house. They didn't even have 2X at the time. No, it was yeah. real time, and this CD burner looked like a VCR, and I bought it from a friend of mine, an old neighbor. Uh, it was like, uh, at the time, almost like six, $700 a piece of equipment that I bought for <laughs> a couple of hundred off of him, and basically... What I'm saying is we were ahead of the game with that, too, and we got to be the dudes in high school, the first band in our area even to come to school we hadn't even seen it with Chattanooga. CDs when you weren't signed. You know, it was like, whoa, wait, how'd you do that? You know, <laughs> unless you was a gospel. Yeah, so, if you're into that stuff in high school, you're already a, a way leap ahead. Oh, yeah. Because, I mean, I feel like at my school there was, like, 
people that played drums and stuff, but I feel like they weren't making CDs and albums or anything. You know? Nobody was. Me and bro. Nate jumped into recording as quick as we jumped into music, though. I mean, we started with that drum box, then we went to four tracks, and I mean, I was just, I was at Radio Shack buying microphones back when I was a kid. Yeah, he was a good engineer as a kid. Well, we were always just like taking just a little bit of gear and taking it as far as it would go. As far as you could. I used to to fuck around with this, uh, the first Xbox, and it had a karaoke game. And it yeah. came with a microphone and shit. What? Yeah, and I would just record <laughs> vocals on that and stuff. I don't know, just yeah, it's little, mm-hmm. just a little seed. Is well, all it we takes had, to get you. We had a chop. We had a, a, a <laughs> well, karaoke thing, you know. Yeah, we had a karaoke thing. Uh, it was called a Singalodeon. Uh, Lex Luger, yeah. he started making beats on a PlayStation game or something like that, and then he. But yeah, they had the PlayStation Beat game. I knew somebody that made them on there. Yeah, well, I never played, hey, but yeah, that's the that's thing. <laughs> I mean, you see, I see like my little nephews, and you know, it's just like I remember getting the pots and pans out when I was a kid, and just using that. Like, if you've got the want, the will, and the interest in music, and then if you have just a touch of talent, like it comes through on its own. You go get the tape plays and shit. You're just drawn to that. I always was. That was the kind of nerd I was. I wanted to go and record this. I'd be sitting in my room with a microphone and yeah, a or kid could sing. Uh, a video. He used video. Uh, he used video a lot. Yeah. Brad would walk around just like this is my house. You know, like this is my room. Talking to this audience that never existed, really. Oh, he was just Snapchat. my pilot yeah. for the ribs, you know. So. <laughs> yeah. No, no. It's just like, always a need for always, more. Yeah, he was always producing a something. Some type of content. Yeah. Creators. We've always been like that. I mean, we just, as a, a band, we've never been huge into covering other bands' music. Uh, you know, it's something Chad and I do now more than we ever have but it's just for fun really yeah. you guys do with that the live? band we do it not not much with the band we may kick a couple of covers if we're just in the mood just kind of freestyle you talking about when you two play by yourself when we play together uh, we do more cover songs but the main thing I'm saying is that all three of us have always wanted to use the talent for original music from the go like we just as soon as I got a guitar I believe I wrote a song before I learned a song Oh shit! Yeah, I think the first thing I did on a guitar was to write this song. Definitely was on piano. <clears throat> that was the case. Yeah, it's always been that way. I mean, we're just—that's the type of musicians we are. Some musicians learn how to play the guitar, and they are cannot wait to learn all of their favorite songs. And that's just not the type that I necessarily was. You know, I always just wanted to write my favorite yeah. song. Well, and Brad's just very into his own music. I doubt he could name. Five Rolling Stone songs. That's not fair, man. <laughs> yeah. This is the World Wide Web. They don't put me on the spot. Oh, well. I could do it. I could do it. Well, it's okay. I'm not going to. I could do it. He could do it. I could do um, it. No, I was just saying it's a cool thing. You're in your own element. Well, what are some of uh, you guys' uh, biggest musical influences? Mm-hmm. I would think. I was just going to Nirvana? Go, I would, that's what I was going to say. Nirvana is a big one. Uh, chili peppers is a big one. The yeah. chili peppers. Mm-hmm. And then you've got the your, Foo Fighters. Your get up kid saves the day kind of feeling. I from am the, in love with. I always have been in love with the singer from uh, Counting Crows, and so I don't love them so much anymore. It was a time in my life when I was younger, but I gotta say that was definitely a humongous influence. Of mm-hmm. mine. Now I've let that go, moved yeah. on. But at one time, like he was. Guns and Roses was kind of that way for me. It was kind of like there was just this oh. picture of rock and roll <laughs> in my head, and it was somewhere in that Guns and Roses dimension. Yeah, because some people influence <laughs> the way you play, and then some people influence the way you act, act and look and want to yeah. be. Mm-hmm. We've had different ones. Nirvana kind of hit that right in the middle. Yeah, like in 311 was, like, yeah. was some guys that acted in a way we wanted to act. Yeah. You know, they were that, all about good vibes well, and That peace. video they had, we watched it a million times. Enlarged to show detail. Mm-hmm. Oh, we literally so watched so part fun. one and two. Nirvana was another one that was, it was more like you just wanted that. 
feeling. essence about yeah. you, then you didn't really want to sound just like Nirvana. You just wanted to feel like Nirvana. Oh, cool. Yeah, you just yeah. wanted so, people to be like, my God, so cool. they don't care about nothing. Yeah, there was so much energy <laughs> just in the idea of of that uh, that whole thing. Yeah. There was when we started playing music, we were very young before we could drive and. You know, around 97 was towards the end of this really cool rock and roll that came around that that still hasn't came back around the way it did. You had even Rage Against the Machine and things that were just doing things you had never heard or seen. Like, it had, it was it was a cool time to be just becoming a teenager. That's around when and hip-hop, a musician. hip-hop started taking over, right? Yeah, well, I mean, it did right after and, these guys uh, died off. Like, uh, the 90s, I mean, seems like rock and roll was 94. killing it at the end of the 90s, I thought. Yeah. But and then was, early 2000s, yeah, hip-hop came in and took Lil over Wayne for came the last in. decade. Outcast, two decades. <laughs> Outcast yeah. got huge. 3-6 got gigantic. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, uh, that's the thing, though. In the 90s, it was like so many people like Nirvana, <clears throat> who are these guys that are so... They're abstract and they're weird and they're doing like you know Jack White's another good example of just these people really doing weird stuff and that's what we really love you know Wes Wyrick and it's yeah Wes is a good example <laughs> but it's just the fact that you don't have to like today's country songs they're so spelled out and they're so exact and they tell you a story from beginning to end you know and rock and roll was kind of built on breaking all those rules down and. Uh, kind of playing a sound that just excites your body yeah. it almost it's just the, you get the feels the experience. you don't know why nobody's <clears throat> ever been able to tell their parents why they like rock and roll you know it just <laughs> sounds good feels good and that's really it like it's just not that complicated as long as it sounds and feels good it doesn't have to be spelled out so much i think that's just one of the things that the well, 90s had that we've gotten away from yeah you know what i mean the, the 90s had so much <clears throat> Art. misunderstood things but it was this different way well, it was poetry. Of, yeah it was different than it being misunderstood poetic. it was like being a very a deep to a different point it, it almost stopped as quick as it started but even like the blind melon video with the little bumblebee girl and stuff there was this oh yeah this, that's a, this one of my something that was, was very something artsy, in the air dude. yeah it's just very artsy <clears throat> then you have somebody like red hot chili peppers <clears throat> and you can't ever figure out, right? Like every song that you listen to upon first glance sounds like gibberish. Like, man, did you just <laughs> stick 92 words together <laughs> and just pick them random? And then the second and third time you listen to it, you're like, oh my gosh, I think that he's basically it's saying great. like, this is how the world is and like, mm-hmm. this is how God looks at you. And it's just like, he actually says so much, but he keeps it super poetic and he's not yeah. very black and white he's just you kind of got to form it in your own mind it's interactive I love that have you ever seen them yes Where I went to the hospital at a red hot chili oh, shit. what city Chattanooga uh-huh. uh, it's the first time I ever crowd surfed in my life <laughs> was I, it the last yes <coughs> yes <laughs> Adam Brown I, I went with Adam Brown and uh, all of a sudden he stole my wallet out of my back pocket. I was like, hey, motherfucker. And he just picks me up and throws me in. I was like, woo! And it was, it was cool. And then I got to this, uh, like, just a range of dickheads. And they uh, all moved out of the way. And I felt like eight feet on my back and blacked <laughs> out. And some girl drug me out. And I ended up going to the hospital and was out of soccer for four weeks. Were you in high school? Yeah. Okay. That's why you said soccer. I don't yeah. know if you played for college or what. I didn't play in college. Uh, you did? Yeah. But, uh, no, I was I was injured pretty bad. <laughs> but I'll never forget the chili peppers after that. I saw them in Knoxville. But did we see them twice, Chad? I've seen them, I think, three times. We saw them here. What no? Else? Yeah. No, we, we saw them with the Foo Fighters one time, and I believe in Knoxville, and... They ran out with the socks on. Yeah. So that <laughs> they was ran cool. out. I was like, dude, I got the full chili experience. Yeah. <laughs> well, when I was reading their book, uh, or Anthony, Anthony's uh, autobiography deal, uh, you know, they weren't even that big at all till that naked sock thing started happening. And he said that yeah. he started making them so popular uh, in L.A. 
then it was ma- mainly the gimmick of the we nakedness. We could have done this podcast with no clothes on. Yeah. It would have gotten way more views. Yeah. Viral. Yeah. Viral. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but what's even weirder too? The virality too, of that, that situation would have been out of hand. I got to hear another. <laughs> if you look up interviews, you can probably find them on YouTube of Anthony Kiedis and his autobiography. Like two times, I've heard yeah, him he's... getting interviewed about it, and him being like, "Is that really in that book?" He's like, "I don't remember that." <laughs> like, Some editors writing his whole yeah, life. Yeah, like, like he apparently had somebody write me. it, and then when he got interviewed about this book, two different interviews I've found about him where he's like. What? Well, there was some he's extensive like, that's, he's drug like, use, man. He's like, back that's in the not 80s. real. He's like, that's not true. And they're like, it says it. It's yeah. kind of like Austin Powers. Yeah. This <laughs> isn't your penis enlarger. Uh, Here's one book written by Austin Powers. <laughs> <laughs> that is my bag, baby. <laughs> that movie's hilarious. I love that movie. That shit's funny as hell. Um, so, what is like one of the best shows that you guys could think to say that you've seen? I know it's hard to say the oh. best. Best of anything, you know. Oh, man, Stevie Wonder was so good. And I think the half of the reason was because him being blind, no one cared to get up front. So, like, you could go all the way up to the stage and nobody was, like, leaning up trying to get up there. Nobody cared. So, literally, everybody had their own five feet of dance space. From the beginning to the end of the concert, uh... You could get up close to the stage. Nobody was crowded because he couldn't how see big, them. How big or small of a place was this? This was Bonnaroo. Oh, shit. So it was huge, but you could go all the way up to the stage and yeah. then all the way back and nobody would be in your way. It was the weirdest uh, experience. And I know it was because they nobody cared because he couldn't see them. So nobody was wanting to be seen by him. Yeah. So, but uh, <laughs> plus the fact that it was Stevie Wonder's music is on, is electric. So I was dan- I danced, you know. <laughs> I danced my ass. I danced something fierce, but... That was one I'll never forget. I've just never been in an environment where everyone danced and no one had this like stardom feeling. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of why I like to hang in the back. You know, you yeah. can chill. You can oh, throw a back. blanket down and lay down. You're or, safe. Yeah. You just got your homies there and you guys are cool. You're not. <laughs> yeah. You're trying to dance oh, and like people are getting pissed off at you and shit. Well, water being hosed. a short guy, that don't yeah. work, man. Every time everybody's pumped, like let's go <laughs> down front. I'm like, oh no, this is the end of the concert for me. <laughs> yeah, your vision gets worse. Oh, worse. Yeah, it's just shoulders. That's all I'm seeing, just shoulders. But <laughs> yeah, my right. favorite one was I seen Aerosmith uh, oh, yeah. on the Nine, Nine Lives, Lives tour and. Mm. I just never seen such a rock star in my life and <laughs> Steven Tyler in the way he did. Mm-hmm. And I felt like I was in a time warp back to like 1979, you know, just, it was awesome. That was the best showmanship I had ever seen. I mean, I knew these guys had played these songs again and again and again and again and again. And the, they had the fury and the little fire in it where it felt like they had just wrote these last week. And I think that that's what I like. Nine Lives about was a that. good album by them too, just uh, for the good. time. That's like a rock and that's still they rock and roll. Old, it wasn't too. alternative or anything. It was like still your rock, rock. What it was lock, just straight you know? rock, yeah, straight rock. What did you guys think of when they came out with uh, that song with uh, Run DMC? Oh man, we oh. were young. Well, yeah, yeah, that's too young. It was yeah, so we hip. So though. I remember like liking it when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it, I was so young when that happened, though. But I remember even Brandon Pride and stuff, kids in school, we would they would beatbox at the lunchroom while somebody else would be like, da na 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 da na 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 Yeah. Yeah, recreating yeah. that whole beat. Yeah, well, so. the thing is, I mean, that's what's weird, all right, about being in our age is because uh, I didn't know that was the first time rock and rap met. Well, we like, were just yeah, kids. Normal, like, uh, to it was, me, it was like, well, was this normal. is what's yeah. up, you know? And so it wasn't breakthrough. It was just like, cool. which I think lends to where we're at now. I mean, there's plenty of rock and rap that's happened in the world. And it's like... yeah. Well, rappers are starting to kind of dress like heavy metal and stuff. They're starting to wear like chain link chains and stuff around. like Because rap's turning back, just like you're talking about in the 90s. And then it was like this, like pimp rap and stuff. You know, I don't know, yeah. like t- early two thousands, like Fifty Cent and stuff. Like, Baller status. Like yeah, blame. yeah. And then all of a sudden, you know, Gucci Mane came along. And then there was trap, and then you got your twenty tens. But now it's getting to where all the younger people, it's kind of like metalish. It's like they have a metal. It's like they get their inspiration from rock. A little grungy. And, well, I guess both. Yeah, but yeah, grungy like with the well, rips. Weird, right? Because the our styles. favorite guys. 
Snoop and uh, Dre and these guys were all just wearing uh, very basic stuff. Plaid shirts, <laughs> you know, and khaki hockey, pants a, a and jersey. Converse All-Stars. Like, it was really cheap to dress like your favorite rapper for a while. Yeah. When it first came out. You could go to Walmart. And nobody was shining bling everywhere, man. They might have a, mar- like a marijuana leaf. But they didn't have you had diamonds a gold, when we first you could started. Get a gold digging leaf earring or a hoop. It like, wasn't about it money. It was about symbolism even. back then, though. Yeah, it now, wasn't a big diamonds. No. I don't know who was the first one to bling it out, dude. Who uh, brought that? Probably in? some of that pimp stuff because I've seen stuff in yeah, Chicago. It been, they really it been like Master P and and I mean, now Snoop them did do some pimp. Like he, yeah, he, he did does feather it up yeah. in big hat and purple. But suit. no, but not the the grill and the. Yeah, I don't know who made that. Who started getting iced out? Flame had the biggest clock in the world. Maybe, yeah. I mean, he made it cool to work. There was an L. Who made it? Who made it? It was like the Nelly days and stuff when they just went up, or you know, where everybody drove a Phantom. Everybody has iced out everything. I saw uh, this documentary in Chicago. It's this woman, and she is like the go-to woman to get your shit uh, bedazzled. Yeah, Yeah, like a pimp. Mug, you know, like all, they have the like pimp cup. And all of yeah. The cup, yeah. She, we saw she's it. She's a granny. She's, she's like eighty years We've old. We've seen. We probably saw her work when we were at uh, in mm-hmm. L.A. Because we remember the, the Dave's pimp, chalice. The, the pimp. She probably song. did it. Yeah, yeah. It said Dave, uh, Dave Dizzle. Mm-hmm. No. I, and she's from Chicago. I think it might just be a Chicago thing. Well, it's just like there's a couple of things like that, like uh, just like the nudie suits in Nashville, like. Uh, there's a couple of different big movements. What's a, what, what, nudie suit? Nudie yeah, like suits, the nudie suits man. with these old, um, entertainers. Like Elvis, that suit with all the stuff yeah. all over it, that's oh, a nudie yeah. suit. Same yeah. idea, yeah. like, it's just that he's, guy was blinging out, uh, yeah, he's a certain designer. entertainers wear better than anybody else, mm-hmm. and him, he became the one. Him and Manuel. Then you got a bunch of rip-offs that come after that, just, you know, same as... Everybody's making blinged out stuff now. Yeah, yeah. Rhinestones, cowboys. I've seen some of those uh, nudie suits over the uh, <laughs> over in the Hall of Fame down the street. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's a bar called Nudies downtown yeah. now. Is that's that what got, that's for? Yeah, and it's Shout got, out. It's got, got a this, chick on it, so you would think. Yeah. Well, it's got those suits hanging on the wall it's and glass. A, oh. Yeah, I've never been in there. I've just seen the sign with the chick on it. It says That's nudies. That's what it's about, think, bro. Let's go in there, dude. You think it's nudie the girls? Yeah, it's the trick uh, it's people bar, are thinking right? it's a... <laughs> it's the longest bar on Broadway. Yeah. It's a great uh, bar and great people. Those are friends of ours uh, that run their place. And it's a cool place. But the yeah. history of it's really cool, too. And those... Yeah, I would like to get my hands on a nudie suit, and I would play a show in one. <laughs> Heck yeah, yeah, dude. I would do a day out. I would do a suit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Maybe pack a cute They're number not that thunder. different. No, they're not. That's, that's, <laughs> your next, hat. that's your next music video. You need to wear them. Mariachi. Oh, so play right. a show live. Our so mother right. could make them, even. Oh. We'll film it. Yeah. Right. We could just have them custom made for ourselves. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then, you know, film. The three amigos. Mm-hmm. Oh, except for, yeah. Sponsorship. Oh, let's take a minute. This is brought to you by Margaritaville. And Yingling. A nice, refreshing <laughs> lager. And look, sorry. When you're feeling down. Thanks for letting us be one of the early ones on the Milk Chalk podcast, man. Oh, yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. It feels like such a treat. First rock what band? What number are we? First rock band. I don't know. I, um, First I'll, rock band. I'll just name them after the band. All right. You know, instead of the numbers. Yeah, I might start you know, numbering them. Are going to go back and count them? <laughs> I might start numbering them if I, if I ever do one that's not like uh, interviewing artists. Say, yeah. Just say if we just did another one, we just sat down and started chatting about... Right, what, because it's hell. still us, but it ain't really about us. Yeah, I would just call it number two, because there's be already cool. number one that's not really about anything, you know? I'd love to come on and be talking about something else, too. Yeah. Other than ourselves. Yeah. Speaking of which, what's your next big thing to do, Milk Chalk? What do you mean, show? Or you, I mean, besides oh. these interviews, what are you... What am I doing? I'm working on a cooking show. Oh, he's Cooking snippet. show. He, he, did a, he does little clips already. Milk's Kitchen. Mm-hmm. Um, trying to get that. Doing the vlog chalk. Um, I've got a vlog to edit from over the weekend. Uh, yeah. Um, I've got some songs. I've got some tracks going on uh, got a show Monday got a show Monday sunset show sunset show 
Nasty Nate DJs as a uh, Night Frog as well, and uh, we're playing at Cobra on Monday on the back porch, doing a little uh, back porch set, just chilling. And uh, but yeah, I've got like probably like five beats that are two of them are like pretty much like done. The other ones are kind of ideas, and then I really, I've really had writer's block with uh, writing words to a song because I really just want it to be like true and meaningful and not like just generic rap like you know not like Shallow talking out. about yeah just not like talking about trap. shooting somebody or something yeah not about yeah. trap uh, I mean so it takes <clears> us <throat> a long time a lot of times to make it genuine. I just don't like to rush it's, that process you know I well, like to it, wait it, until something fires me up <clears throat> pisses me off makes me sad moves me somehow I can't just be in an okay state <laughs> and then pull out this amazing dramatic song. Well, like, it doesn't even work right. You it's know? weird. Yeah. It's, some of I gotta them pop wait out, till somebody some of them don't, but there's me. no effort involved in the weird way. Well, it's I can like usually, you have to wait for it. I think you got to respect it. You know, the more I don't freak out when it's been three weeks since yep. I've done something... I feel like there's a reward there for trusting that it's on the way. Yeah, it comes in waves. So that's what I do. True. I'm just like, if I don't freak out, it'd be better when it gets here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I'm afraid that uh, God is going to rob me of how good it is if I work. Because you're worried oh, about it. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I feel the same way. I felt like uh, I just wanted to uh, address the, the, uh, the, the instruments we played, too. Yeah, that was sure. on my mind because Nate's new perps, his drum set is are beautiful. Well, shout them out. What do you got? Yeah, me. I'm running just plain Jane precision bass, black squire. Through what? Through a TC electronic uh, combo amp that Nate bought me, and it thunders. And oh. then, uh, but the main thing was just uh, I, I thought people would want to know what Nate played. Like I think in videos, I always want to know what the drummer likes. Drummers always. You've like got two kits, know. right? I do. I've it'll probably I guess it'd be my fifth kit in life, but I have two at the house. One of them uh, is a Donahoe that I've had since 2003. Rest in peace. Rest, Rest in, peace. in peace. This old man made them in Murfreesboro. And recently I got my dream set, which is Orange County drums. And they're purple and they sound amazing and loud. <laughs> and they're unbelievably I love them. thunderous. They're gorgeous. And I'm playing, usually you'll catch me playing Chad's uh, Telecaster. Mm-hmm. Or sometimes my Stratocaster. And always the same Marshall amp. I don't know wh- what model it is, even though I've looked at it a lot. You of always time. carry that Marshall. Oh, man, I usually... <clears throat> I can see yeah, it I always too. carry that Marshall, but I'm not a gear ahead and on purpose. I just don't have time. I mean, I just <laughs> plug it in. It sounds good enough. It sounds good enough. I mean, I hope that what I wrote can overshadow the little nuances in tones that I feel like a lot of people spend their time worrying about. Yeah, who I got a lot of shit? things going on. Yeah, <laughs> if this song is that six strings, yeah, you got a distortion pedal. The song is hinging yeah. on is the wild? tones that I'm using with my guitar. We're screwed. Completely, <laughs> then we're screwed. Yeah. We got nothing. Yeah. Well, I saw where uh, I forget I forgot which studio and who it was, but some people in Memphis they uh, they had a busted amp or something, and then they liked how it sounds, so they had that distorted guitar, yeah. and they ended up using it on a track and stuff. Yeah, well, so, that's, that's how, how distortion, distortion got invented. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah Howlin the beginning Wolf, of it. Yeah. Howlin' Wolf back in the day. That was the name of the artist or something? Howlin' Wolf, the old guitar. Yeah, if I'm not getting it wrong, right, I went over to Memphis, took the tour, went through that thing. And uh, (laughs) so, you know, they was on the way to the recording studio. and uh, So that's the the same story he's talking about? No. It could be. He said Memphis. First distortion. This was in Memphis. Yeah, 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 Yeah. it was. At, at Sun Studio, and so then the yeah. dudes were on the way. They bust a hole in it. They had no choices, you know. And liked and it. And they taped it up. It had a little boom. They went for it, and it started the craze. That's dude. what they. Got. That's what they went for. And that was. That's like, the way we've kind of always done. It. That's what I'm saying. We've just had mixed match equipment luck, and barely enough. Shit. And people would tell you if you came in and saw what me and Nate were always working with, you'd be like, yeah. "No, there's no way you have what you need to record an album." And we just keep going. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Go to Crystals and get us a four pack <laughs> and come back and listen to what yeah. we got. 
Yeah. <laughs> we got this. Yeah, those were the good old days. You know, you could just bust a speaker and get famous. Now you got a red hot chili pepper and wear a sock on your cock. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, people yeah, come out. A resort and all kinds Shock of things. factor. Yeah. Mm. Some people I see, they fake stuff on viral videos. Like these two guys, they'll go in and make certain situations and the... Yeah, like, the, the boss and the co. Have you seen that one? Yeah, the guy's and he's like, like you're fired. Yeah, they go. One guy, in. He, he acts like he's the manager busting him for applying at another place while on his lunch break. <laughs> and he fires him at, in, in the front spot, of- but he don't tell the people working there. So they're like, hey, that's like you're his manager and you're treating him like this. Like this is unprofessional. And he's like, I don't care. He's yeah, like, don't come back. But you know, they're actors in his face. It's the one that and threw the meat on him, Brad, at the at that one that he threw it across the like subway or whatever. Yeah, I just think that it's like it's a mixed like, you bag. Put, that does a good social experiment, but it's so unfair. But it's super creative. unfair. Like it's creative as hell, though. Mm-hmm. It's creative. It's just not genuine. Yeah, I have trouble the with who, the blindness uh, of the people involved. You know what I mean? It's, it's like a like, public prank. Well, it just depends on what you're trying to do. If you just try to freak him out and get yeah. some reaction, that's just exactly yeah, what Well, this about. one's kind of harmless. It, he's just firing a guy in front of people. Yeah. He's not hurting the public. Yeah, They're I just kind of like, oh, my some God. Some of the people I've seen on the internet <laughs> push it way too far. Oh, They yeah. come up, pinch girlfriend's butt or something. It's like, yeah, yeah I'm going to turn around and slug. That one guy that slaps <laughs> you know the, the, yeah. the, the guy that slaps yeah. the cigarettes out of the stranger's mouth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fuck this game, this shit. Yeah. Tyrone. Yeah. Tyrone. Yeah. I'm Tyrone. Yeah. I'm Tyrone. <laughs> yeah. You never know. That Those might be fake, too. They might yeah. Not. You, yeah. Know. you never know. But either way, it's like you, you get that feeling. <laughs> you know, you get that, oh, that's too bad feeling. Yeah. yeah. Like, that hurts. But, no, I don't but know. It, it went viral either way. Yeah. yeah. If people, if it's a good thing or a bad thing, it doesn't matter. Well, it just goes. I mean, credit for them. They had to, like, go out and, like, come up with the skit and then actually... Somehow to get it to work, yeah. Oh, people don't realize doing any simple little thing, any little commercial for your, the F- your That's show what was... coming up, it takes. Shoot, dude, you're talking yeah. a couple of hours no matter what you do. If remember, you're making a flyer uh, or whatever, you can I remember spend when Vine, minutes Vine came out, mm-hmm. I was so excited because that was kind of the thing of all of them. It seemed like everybody <clears throat> went that extra mile then. Now, I mean, I'm, people are still doing it, but that was like... Vine. Vine. When it came out, everybody was doing things for the Vine that were just a little bit over the top. I really liked it. Yeah. Now it's still there. It just uh, it's just not for the Vine. You they need f- to bring it back. It was yeah. cool, man. Yeah, it was I'll amazing ta- I'll how take high up that went, and then how quickly it got smushed by Instagram. Instagram <laughs> and stuff just kind of warped it with they the. They just smushed it. Yeah. They just uh, people were already there, and they were like, "Okay, we'll do that too." <laughs> and then now there, no, so, well, somebody bought to, Vine too, didn't they? Probably used to Twitter. Right? Yeah, they bought it and just kind of shut it down. They're like done. Now they have Vine camera, and it, I think you, it, but it posts it to Twitter. Oh, uh, so it's just it's harder. It's just Twitter now. Um, that, one, that one dude that was blocking the haters, he's probably just at home now. <laughs> he's probably not doing anything. And he thought, you know, he was, blocking out the he was one of the biggest. Oh, I remember that now. Don't mind me. Yeah. I'm just blocking, blocking out, out the haters. The haters. <laughs> Little country boy. Yeah. <laughs> Tell my Wi-Fi I love her. <laughs> <laughs> so what's one of the craziest things that's happened at one of you guys' shows? Um, didn't you get drugged at one of them or something? Chad? Uh, I drugged myself in a sense, but yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? I had a girlfriend at the time who I thought had gotten drugged. Why did you think that she had gotten drugged? Because she had. What, and by the way she was acting, or you no, saw somebody? No, by doing the way something? everyone was around her drink that I didn't know, and oh. they shouldn't have been around it, and it was just weird and shady. Yeah. And I was like, you need to throw that away because I'm pretty sure they put something in your drink. Yeah. And she, drink it. <laughs> she wouldn't for some stupid reason she argued about it and my way of fixing it was to just drink it and see <laughs> and if there was anything in it now, yeah. I, my last, did, you, did you take it from her and drink the whole thing no you I just drank it? some of it yeah and I remember my last memory that I can remember pretty much except this one time of some of my guitar strap on stage uh, oh, it was before you played yeah right before we went on <laughs> I just put it down and said tastes fine <laughs> and that's, what, that's the last memory I have. And my, Brad said I was going up and down Broadway trying to get like out, oh, of, out of my clothes. How did he? How did he perform? Perfect. Oh, okay. That's that what, was the that's why we knew. Time. That's why we knew I wasn't drunk and that I had been drugged because if I was drunk, I wouldn't be able to play good. Yeah, uh, we've, we've seen but that. I played flawless. Yeah. But don't have a memory. I have no memory of being on stage except this one time I looked down the crowd and I couldn't get my strap to do right. I remember that. I remember thinking this strap sucks, and then. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's all I remember I have of that show. And the next day, bro, I was like, dude, you were trying to like pee on the sidewalk on Broadway <laughs> and uh, all this stuff that just made no sense. And oh, yeah. we've, you know, found out later there was like a dude lurking there. What happened to your girlfriend? Did she, uh, yeah, so did it, she... it was all crazy too. She had the same. Un- what was she stuff. doing? I don't know. I don't she remember. Peeing on Broadway? Or... No, <laughs> but when we woke up, everything was out was of she? order too. The whole. Oh, no, she was with us, I guess. The whole room had been like rearranged. We woke up, all the lights were still on in the whole apartment. Like yeah. it was, it was just bizarre. I mean, the takeaway is that roofies taste good. <laughs> they take. They don't have a taste. <laughs> <laughs> they have no taste. If that's what that was, it could have been anything. Well, but what's, what's, whatever it was, it definitely it, after that little notion, it gets classified as roofie. Yeah, because I was. I had all the energy in the world apparently, but. I was out. None of the I was out there. What's, uh, yeah. What's some other crazy things that's happened? And some people got oh, some man. fights or some. Uh, I played with a uh, a real bad stomach virus when we were, I think, in tenth grade, oh. and I had to like throw up in between every <laughs> hook because yeah. I think we got played to play a birthday party or something. Oh but, yeah. Oh man, I, I was so of... sick and just like. Ugh. Playing drums. I've seen plenty of shows we've had where somebody's been just way too drunk and made a spectacle out of self. You know, either passed out flat, or, or yeah, or thrown up in front of the stage, or uh, a <laughs> lot of girls that ain't made any sense at oh, all. Oh yeah, lots of have, girl fun that have just been bonkers <laughs> by the end of the show, screaming, I've gotten or doing a few stuff. kisses. That's been nice. You know, sometimes a girl just upon leaving might, you know. Reach Come up and on grab stage. you, yeah, yeah, and just lay one on you. That's always makes a nice kind of like getting a tip, yeah, but better. It's like getting a tip, yeah, <laughs> it's a tip, but it's, still. it's a tip, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's that's probably about it. I mean, we've played some pretty fun places, uh, though, because one of the coolest shows would have been well, one of the two coolest shows is we used to bring our full PA with some generators out on the lake and go mm-hmm. to island and uh, we had this pontoon boat with no furniture on it it's just this big barge you know and we would set up the music on it one year and uh, I mean you can just imagine I don't know how many people there were out there but we were out there rocking on this boat in the water People were in the water chilling, you know, drinking. <laughs> well, we did it more than one spare. year. Sometimes it yeah. was on the island. Sometimes it was floating. Yeah, but it would be a fifty to a hundred people, no problem, out in the middle of this. Just those are like my, probably in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, memories. Those are just like the most unique shows. <clears throat> it was wild because it would go all night and stuff too. And there was no, you know, it's kind of like um, when you're out on these islands, you're on. There's no rules. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of like it's your, your own night of, of just yelling. You can you can be as loud as you want and as crazy and rude as you want. We also fried a <laughs> soundboard out there. And and, uh, and PA no, speakers. you got to watch it with generators. With the generator, and we didn't yeah. know that yeah, the send, watts and stuff. Yeah, they send yeah, a. Yeah. It's, their signal isn't constant enough not to make your hardware hot. Yeah, put yeah. you some little breaker boxes in between you know yeah runs that stuff hot you'll look in into the speakers and see a, a little candle flame yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, is well, that, that on fire that was a uh, so that's like one of the one of your favorite places you've uh, performed like what are some of uh, what are some of your favorite clubs that you've played at JJ's will always be a favorite in Chattanooga JJ's the place Bohemia they, and Chattanooga it is just that's the number one. They've probably I mean, been around half as long as the band favorite. or so. They've been around at least ten years, it seems. I wouldn't know, but because we were playing there, but probably before I lived in Nashville. It's our favorite spot in Chattanooga. We played at several spots over the years, but JJ's, JJ's cool. has the best feel, the best people. It's a little shotgun bar. It's narrow, like a hallway. It's got an outdoor space in the back, but. Super cool. And That's Chattanooga always has a cuddly crowd. They're, they're really friendly. Oh, yeah. They're always just, almost like they knew you, even if they don't know you kind of thing. Nobody, I, here in Nashville, I will talk to more people, but I will get their name. And in Chattanooga, you will literally just talk to them and never even be like, what's your name? You'll just be talking and <laughs> everyone talks. It's a very friendly, friendly city. What about Nashville? What's a- I'd say uh, Cobra. Cobra is yeah. awesome. Bar. Used to be Fubar. Then you got Springwater. Room was a cool place. Yeah, I like the Spring. end. 
The and is really cool. Yeah. Spring Got water. a lot of cool stuff. Spring water is a cool place to play. Yeah, it's friendly. What about the end? I love the end. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. Totally. When's the last time you guys played there? I feel like it's been a minute. We need to do minute. it. Yeah. It's been a good minute. Yeah. It's been a year or two. Nate's played there. They can be more yeah. expensive than the other bars, so usually don't even. Um, yeah, it's amazing how different the prices can like be on the way it works. Play there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah true. Well, it's getting, getting more and more. Here, it's getting know. more and more. Yeah. And tit balls and bowling greens. Cool. Yes. I love that place. Yeah. Spill water. Bowling too. Green. All three of those have a, the same feels in different cities. You know, a little it's just, divey, it's like a little warm, but intimate. Like people are cool. So cool. Yeah. You feel like you can talk to the people that you run next to. Yeah. Something about it. Bowling Green's got a great scene. Really, a lot of cool bearded, long-haired people over there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, I just drove through there on the way to Louisville, and they have it's great. They have five exits. Bowling Green? Sure do. Yeah. Wow. That's sure crazy. Do. You can go. That's everyone's house. Yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> that's Mamaw's exit. <laughs> that's Will's exit. That's Uncle Dad. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy that one city has five exits. Like, it's a good just city. In a row. It's worth it, man. I'm just it's saying it's going to be it. big. Yeah. You know? Well, exit. This, hey, listen. That's the thing. The first thing I noticed about going over there. I remember when we used to go over there to Nate's uh, grandparents when we was kids. And uh, as I said, everybody's got a big yard over here. <laughs> everybody's got a little spread. A little long, mini farm yeah, everywhere you look. Long yards in the garden everywhere you yeah, go. Everybody's got a couple of acres. You know, each where some places you go, everybody's got like a little eighth one. of an acre or something. Usually not one. Yeah. You know, like around here. Like Nate's, you could probably got one. I don't know. I doubt that. No. Yeah, I mean an acre. Oh, I but I don't know what it is. I don't yeah. either, man. <laughs> That's it's tough. probably not a fully. It's probably not a fully. But <laughs> yeah, a I said fully. that's a fully. <laughs> but yeah, I said you guys were from uh, East Tennessee, but never really said the city. Um, Spring City, baby. You guys are all three from there. Mm -hmm. All three. Yeah. Raised. Yeah. Raised up there. Mm -hmm. Nate was imported from the West Coast. Yeah. He was popped out on the West. <laughs> then he rolled his way into the Tennessee. Me and Chad were popped out, made, raised, bred, brought up East Tennessee. Spring City, Tennessee. Yeah. So where is that? Uh, you know, it's, it's right in between explain. Chattanooga and Knoxville. It's an, mm -hmm. it's an hour each direction. Right at yeah. the foot of the plateau. That's it. And it's it totally... Uh, it's got a bunch of springs and waterfalls. Spring it's City. Beautiful. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. Lake. It's, it's just a bunch of nice, pretty nature. There's a lot of good people. You know, too. not an interstate within 45 minutes, no matter which way you go. So, Small towns. Yeah. A lot of good hiking and a beautiful lake. That's the best things about it over there is the nature. It's gorgeous in East yeah, Tennessee. Yeah, sure. And the weather's just a touch better because here in Middle Tennessee, I mean, you guys get way worse storms. Yeah, a lot more tornadoes than we do. They die before they get to us, you know. It's like Nashville just got crushed. And then <laughs> an hour later, we're cool because, you know, well, the there's mountains or whatever yeah, break it it's down. The, well, it's, the, it's literally the wind off the Tennessee River won't let it come down the plateau. Yeah. So it stays up there, up in Crossville. Well, I feel like we should also uh, talk about, uh, you make a lot of beats, you've made a lot of beats, you probably haven't made as many, but you've still made some some good beats. Made some beats. I've yeah. heard some people you use know, some you, beats. You guys are a band, but also you have your own little projects. A little branch outs. Yeah. We branch all branch outs. Yours out is more of a bigger branch out, you know, because you, yeah, you're kind of 50 making 50. Beats since for 15 years so yeah so. do you know how many you've made cuz I feel like I don't really know I mean like that's the deal right so Nate got into making the beats earlier than I did I thought that's pretty cool but I don't like have the super passion for it yeah exactly. every now and then somebody will ask me for one generally they ask me for ones that are more based around rock and roll or country music so the hip hop uh, world, they like my beats, you know. I like those too. The ones you made like 
a couple years ago. Yeah, so yeah, up but... church the redneck used a couple of the beats, and then uh, you know had a few other artists that uh, with less notoriety they used them. But I love to do it. It's just not passionate to me like writing poetry oh, yeah. or or anything like that. I just uh, like to sometimes kind of goof and make a awesome hip hop beat. I mean, I love every kind of music. Right. I just felt like uh, yeah. people should know that. That you they know, you do guys, other music. Hit yeah. me up if you need beat, alright? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Those hiccup beats were tight. Um, well, I like to do it. I mean, I'm country, but yeah, we can. We got some soul. Well, yeah, I'd say we could uh, go ahead and wrap it up. We're hitting about an hour. Well, I just wanted to say. I want to uh, say... I want to show that again. Yeah. Talk this, about this just to say that you know I don't know if we actually pulled it out, but yeah, the jump drive yeah. is the is it's going to be our way of giving the people. The music from now on, this will be the main way you'll get handed it. So, and uh, what's the name of the uh, what's the name of the single that's coming out? Do you do you guys have it a name yet? Name? Was it High Five. five. Yeah. High, High Five. High Five is the name that of the sounds, single. That sounds very positive. Uh, the song, it, not so much. You know, that's a yeah. twist. It's a twist, right? I mean, it is a high five, right? Because it's a reckoning. The whole song is about an understanding of how things really are, as opposed to the tunnel vision that some person had and what they thought it was. So, yeah, I mean, that always deserves a high five when you realize what's really going on. Well, be on the lookout for high five. Mm -hmm. Come to the show. It's at the Cobra in East Nashville. It's July, what, 25th? 25th. 25th. And you might get handed a jump drive. You might not. Either way, they'll probably have CDs for sale. So, this is Ever Vigilant, and we're out of here. Chalk Talk. Chalk Talk.